假包，假包。Fake bag, fake bags. This is a fake bag that I spent over thirty thousand yuan on. I used to hesitate to use it, but now it's bothering me. Even just sitting there in my car, I never used it after buying it. Now those who sell fake bags to us are even more audacious. They say, "Go ahead and sue me. At most, I'll give you a refund. If you don't believe me, just sue me. It would take a lot of time anyway, so you deal with it." China's production of counterfeit goods is becoming increasingly rampant. Not only are fake bags rampant, but even food can be deceptively fake. In a video, a person demonstrates skillful manipulation, turning a yellow object into a perfect fake sweet potato using a pool of red liquid. Here's a standard synthetic steak. It even has some chicken-like patterns with bits of fat scattered around. It's got a fancy name: children's fillet steak. Packaged beautifully, many parents think it's nutritious, so they often buy it for their kids. Whether it's nutritious or not is another story, but its ingredients list is quite extensive, including beef, drinking water, soy protein isolate, soy sauce, white sugar. I counted. There are a total of 17 ingredients. This one is a prime cut steak. Its greatness isn't because it's big, but because its ingredient list has no additives, clean and simple, just the words "beef" in it. The prevalence of fake goods in China has grown from a 30 billion U.S. dollar trade issue in the 1980s to almost a 600 billion dollar market in 2021, accounting for 2.1 percent of global trade volume. It's reported that as much as 80 percent of counterfeit goods worldwide originate from China. What about the quantity of counterfeit goods in China by 2024? Detailed statistics are not available yet, but it's certain that China's counterfeit goods have nearly reached a level where they can incite conflict. Recently, China has been exposed for producing fake stamps. According to the BBC, complaints about counterfeit stamps purchased from legitimate stores across the UK have increased, and these fake stamps circulating in the UK originate from China. The Daily Telegraph even found that four Chinese companies are planning to print up to a million forged stamps per week, each selling for only four pence, about 0.05 U.S. dollars. Their target market is the UK. These fake stamps have been sold on multiple websites such as Amazon and eBay, and even purchased by some small retailers. This news has raised concerns across the UK. Minister of State for Enterprise, Markets, and Small Business Kevin Hollandrake. Stated that the UK Post Office must do everything possible to prevent counterfeit goods from entering circulation, and they must ascertain where the stamps come from and how they enter the UK market. Another UK postal spokesperson advised consumers to pay attention to differences in the perforations, gloss, or color around the edges of the stamps. This is because counterfeit goods may have unusually shiny surfaces, abnormal colors, or inaccurate perforations. Though this is not always the case, the spokesperson also declared that they regularly monitor online markets to detect suspicious activities, such as the sale of heavily discounted stamps, and work closely with retailers and law enforcement agencies to identify the counterfeiters. Alan Mendoza of UK think tank the Henry Jackson Society believes that this is likely a form of economic warfare, just like counterfeiting currency, bonds, or other valuable government notes. During the Revolutionary War, Britain printed vast amounts of paper money to undermine the American economy. North Korea was famous for printing fake 100 US dollar bills. According to British Conservative Party MP Ian Duncan Smith. The perpetrator behind this is none other than the Chinese Communist Party. However, despite the exposure and accusations from various sectors in the UK, the CCP immediately denied these allegations. A spokesperson for the Chinese Embassy in London told the Times that such claims were absurd. However, this denial has not been accepted by the international community, as past cases have shown that the CCP has never stopped interfering with Western liberal democracies. Further fake stamp cases have also shown up in the United States. Around 2022, due to a surge in counterfeit stamps, the U.S. Postal Service had to issue a statement warning that using or selling counterfeit stamps is a crime. It later announced a new policy effective July 9th, stating that mail and parcels with counterfeit postage would be considered waste and could be opened and destroyed. Former Republican member of the California State Assembly Chuck Devore also pointed out that counterfeiting another country's currency, bonds, or other valuable government notes is an act of war. Reportedly, counterfeit stamps manufactured in China were sold for only 7.7 cents each, 88 percent lower than the official price of 63 cents per stamp. On top of that, shipping was free. These counterfeit stamps even had anti-counterfeiting detection, making it difficult to distinguish its authenticity under ultraviolet light. 
For the U.S. Postal Service, which already faces issues such as an outdated business model, huge pension obligations for retirees, inflation, and management challenges, this situation is like rubbing salt on the wound. In 2022, the U.S. Postal Service generated 78.5 billion U.S. dollars in revenue, with most of it coming from regular mail, which is the most vulnerable to counterfeit stamps and a prime target for the CCP. Despite an increase in revenue of 1.5 billion U.S. dollars, losses increased by $2 billion compared to 2021. This is mainly due to rapid inflation and the CCP's influence. Salary and benefit expenses increased by 1.4 billion U.S. dollars, 2.9 percent. Highway transportation costs increased by $696 million, 12.8 percent, and other expenses, including gas and rental and utility expenses, increased by $1.3 billion, or 13 percent. Moreover, before the influx of counterfeit stamps, the United States also experienced the fentanyl crisis by the hand of the Chinese government. The fentanyl crisis refers to the period from August 2021 to August 2022 when the U.S. saw over 100,000 deaths from drug overdoses, claiming about 200 American lives per day, most involving fentanyl. Investigations revealed that Chinese factories had produced and sold opioid drugs, with fentanyl being one of them. Devori said that in 2022, the CCP shipped enough fentanyl to kill 107,000 Americans, along with stealing American intellectual property and printing fake U.S. postage stamps, suggesting that the CCP is waging war against the United States. Without strong action from the Biden administration, such as economic sanctions on Chinese exports, eradicating this issue will be difficult. On July 12, 2023, Devore urged the Biden administration in a Fox News article to take decisive measures to protect American interests. Observers commented that, while China's economy declines, it not only floods the world with low-quality goods, but also counterfeits foreign stamps to make money. Isn't this forcing the world to quickly close its doors to China? Others wonder, combined with China's various soft power tactics within the U.S., does this indicate that the U.S. is the primary target of the CCP? Scholars point out that it's not just the United States that is threatened by the CCP, but the entire democratic fabric of Western society is being undermined. The soft power and interference can be seen in the economic, political, military, cultural, and many other sectors. Firstly, in terms of the economy, the UK government has already been targeted. The UK Parliament's Intelligence and Security Committee released a report in 2023 on the threat posed by China to the UK. It indicates that over the years, the CCP has utilized the policies of the UK government to enhance economic ties between the two countries, thereby advancing its strategic alliance in commerce, technology, and industrial sectors. Due to the insufficient response from the UK government, the ambitions, power, and influence of the CCP have successfully permeated every aspect of the UK economy. Particularly before the COVID-19 pandemic, Chinese funds were rapidly accepted in the UK with little to no scrutiny. For instance, China has consistently been acquiring and influencing industries with energy sectors. This is part of China's carefully orchestrated strategy, aiming to leverage the UK's economy to turn China into an economic powerhouse and create dependency from Western countries. The report also warned that China's attacks would not stop at the economic level. Its intervention aims to Western democracies and strengthen its own interests and values to have a greater say and impact in international affairs. Even the academic community has become a breeding ground for China to exert influence. Chinese funds are particularly effective in infiltrating and bribing this sector, promoting its own narrative while suppressing international criticism. Reports also indicate that apart from the UK, the EU has not escaped CCP influence. Chinese state media admitted that from early 2009 to December 2021, the Chinese new energy vehicle market enjoyed 12 years of subsidy from the Chinese government. During this period, approximately 18 billion U.S. dollars of subsidies were handed out, covering over 1.9 million new energy vehicles. Coupled with the allocated funds of 5 billion U.S. dollars announced by the Ministry of Finance for 2019 to 2020, the cumulative subsidy for Chinese new energy vehicles may have reached 20.6 billion U.S. dollars. Due to the large amount of subsidies, the sales of Chinese new energy vehicles increased by over 260 times in 12 years, from 500 vehicles in 2009 to 1.4 million vehicles in 2020, with sales in 2019, 2014, and 2015 increasing by over 100% year-on-year. Subsequently, Chinese EVs began to enter the European market in large numbers. However, this behavior quickly raised alarms in the EU. Ursula von der Leyen, president of the European Commission, announced on September 12, 2023, 
at the European Parliament that the Commission would launch an anti-subsidy investigation into Chinese EVs. She stated that the global market is being flooded with cheap Chinese electric cars, and the EU must take measures because massive government subsidies depress prices of Chinese cars. The EU will not accept such market-distorting behavior. Meanwhile, the CCP has also been active in international politics. In December 2022, Newsweek cited a report from the international human rights NGO Safeguard Defenders stating that the CCP operates over 100 overseas police-like stations in at least 50 countries. These secret police stations are extensions of Chinese municipal public security bureaus. They intimidate dissidents in the U.S. and suppress criticism of Beijing. They also pressure Chinese citizens and their families to persuade so-called suspects to return to China to face criminal charges. The Public Security Bureau is a euphemism for the Chinese Communist Party's police agencies. Each local public security bureau is under the jurisdiction of the Ministry of Public Security. It is believed that their work is directly related to the overseas missions of the United Front Work Department of the CCP, which exerts pressure on dissidents' relatives in mainland China, monitors and suppresses dissenting voices among overseas Chinese, promotes pro-China rhetoric, and facilitates espionage. As part of the Overseas Chinese Affairs Office's mission, the United Front Department also has set up its own overseas Chinese service centers in various nonprofit organizations overseas. The Daily Caller News Foundation reported that these service centers operate in at least seven cities in the United States. In terms of military, scholars point out that the Chinese government buying overseas land is the most evident form of infiltration by the CCP. According to the New York Times, in July 2022, the U.S. subsidiary of Fu Feng Group, a Chinese agricultural conglomerate, planned to build a massive corn processing plant 20 minutes down the road of the Grand Forks Air Base in North Dakota, home to the North of Grumman, RQ-4, Global Hawk, and some of the nation's most sensitive military drone technology. In response, Andrew Hunter, Assistant Secretary of the U.S. Air Force, Senator John Hoven, stating that the proposed facility would significant threat to national security with both near- and long-term risks of significant impacts to the area's Air Force operations. At the same time, in Texas, a former People's Liberation Army officer purchased 200 square miles of land near Laughlin Air Force Base, a major U.S. Air Force pilot training base. Fox News reported that Chinese company Huawei has seized a large tract of Montana land near nuclear missile silos, where 50 Minutemen III intercontinental ballistic missiles are stored. The Daily Mail reported in August 2022 that according to a report from the U.S. Department of Agriculture, as of December 2021, the CCP holds shares in a total of 383,935 acres of U.S. agricultural land. Additionally, Smithfield Goods, the world's largest pork processing conglomerate headquartered in Virginia, was acquired by a Chinese company, Shuanghui Group, for $5 billion U.S. dollars in 2013. Furthermore, the CCP attempts to indoctrinate Western societies both culturally and spiritually. Reports indicate that in February 2024, the Chinese government organized the Chinese New Year celebration in Trafalgar Square, UK, which included celebrating and singing praises of Chinese communism. The event attracted many onlookers and photographers. However, upon the video's release, it sparked protests from many overseas anti-CCP activists who denounced the CCP's aggressive propaganda tactics, criticizing the inadequate defense against Chinese communist cultural indoctrination by the UK government. In September 2023, at a seminar held at Poughkeepsie, New York, several China experts discussed the threats and harms brought by CCP infiltration into various sectors of American society. It was found that some indoctrination efforts started with children. Kay Rubacek, a writer and filmmaker specializing in communist and socialist ideologies, highlighted the CCP's infiltration and influence on the U.S. education system. She asserts that through social media, various media platforms, and the education system, the CCP injected its ideology into Americans, causing significant harm to the U.S., exemplified by institutions like the Confucius Institutes. According to Rubacek, the U.S. House Committee on Education and the Workforce found in a hearing that over 500 schools in the United States are collaborating with the CCP's Confucius Institutes classrooms or centers, all of which are directly run by the Chinese government. The CCP uses these centers and classrooms as political tools to infiltrate American schools and indoctrinate the next generation. Rubacek stated that it's a very serious problem. The CCP are not only trying to influence American schools, but also some of their policies are also affecting America's next generation, and therefore they are affecting the world. It is evident that the CCP's infiltration has spread throughout the Western civilization. 
However, analysts believe more countries are becoming increasingly aware of the CCP's deliberate and targeted disruption of economic order. Moreover, the CCP's economic disengagement and dissemination of ideology are gradually being marginalized by the international community.